Hello, Professor Mark here to give you the pre-lab uh, lecture for lab number five. The formula of a hydrate uh, should be uh, straightforward. A hydrate is a compound, usually ionic compound, that has a particular number of uh, water molecules bound. So here are some examples uh, below. Uh, we have barium chloride, trihydrate, so we have three water molecules attached to the barium chloride. In this case, we have six uh, water molecules attached to the zinc nitrate, and we have seven water molecules attached to the magnesium sulfate, so we would call this magnesium heptahydrate. And hopefully you guys remember your Greek from uh, lecture class. We have mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, Octa, nona, and deca. You use those when you're naming um, non metal and non metal uh, coming together, covalent compounds. Uh, we use this again for hydrates. So, again, hydrate means that there's water molecules attached to your um, ionic compound, usually a salt. And in the lab, you'll see that the water is going to be removed uh, from the hydrate compound uh, by adding heat. So there are also some terms in the lab manual. Uh, efflorescent, it's a loss of water in a hydrated solid compound. Um, and that's what you'll be doing in the lab. Uh, you'll have a particular compound. This is the formula. This is your formula of the hydrate. And once you add some heat to your compound, obviously um, the water will come off. So this is the formula for an efflorescent um, type reaction. We have the opposite, uh, delicescent, um, and that's when you have something or a compound, um, it can gain water. So it absorbs the moisture from the surroundings, um, from the atmosphere, and it can become a liquid. We also have a third term, hygroscopic, which is kind of like delicescent um, in that it does, the compound will absorb uh, water, but it doesn't form um, liquid. It stays kind of a uh, solid mush. Uh, molar mass, uh, which hopefully you've talked about in your lecture class, so I'll briefly go through this. Uh, molar mass, the unit is grams per mole. Um, it's the same value as uh, atomic mass. Atomic mass has units of AMU. Um, when you find the molar mass of a compound, you have to have a periodic table in front of you, so that will always be given to you on an exam. You're not expected to memorize that. Um, so we're going to try to measure, or sorry, calculate some uh, molar masses. Here's a periodic table, as you know from lecture. The molar masses given there in the bottom number and the number of protons or the atomic number uh, above. So here's an example. Uh, what is the molecular mass or molar mass in grams per mole of potassium sulfate and calcium phosphate? So for the potassium sulfate, you determine how many elements uh, there are of each type. So there's two Ks, there's one sulfur, and there's four oxygens. So in front of you, you'll need the periodic table, which will, will be given to you on the exam uh, or when you do your work. So in this case, we know that potassium, which is a group one alkali metal, is 39.1. So be familiar where these uh, elements exist on the periodic table. You don't want to spend time, uh, particularly on your exam, trying to find out where the element is. So we have two potassiums. We have one sulfur, 32.07, again from the periodic table. And we have four oxygens times 16. So when you do the math for this and you add it up, uh, you get a total of 174.27. Again, the unit is gram per mole. Second example, we have calcium phosphate. So we know that there are three calciums in this case. We have two phosphorus and eight oxygens. Just taking a step back, we know calcium is two plus. You know, it's an alkali earth metal combining with PO4. 
where the charge is 3 minus. So when you crisscross, you get CA3PO4 bracket 2. So again, you, you look at the periodic table, you do the math, and you come up with a molar mass of 310.18 grams per mole. So we're going to extend that idea and just include uh, hydrates. So if we wanted to find the molar mass of these compounds, you would do the same. You find the molar mass, in this case, barium chloride trihydrate, because there's three uh, water molecules, so we say trihydrate. So we find the molar mass of BaCl2, and then we add the mass of three water molecules. So we'll do that on the next slide. So again, for the barium chloride 3 um, H2O trihydrate, we know that the barium, we have one barium, which has a molar mass of 137. 0.2. Again, I got this from the periodic table. We have two CLs. So this comes out to 70.9, 35.45 times 2. And we have three water molecules. So that's 3 times 18, 3 times 18 to get 54. And when we add these three numbers up, these three numbers, we get a total of 262 .2 the unit will be grams per mole. Okay, the next example is zinc nitrate hexahydrate. So again, we have one zinc uh, element. So that's 65, I'll write it out here, 65.41. Got this from the periodic table. We look at the nitrogen. There's two of them. So for the nitrogen, I'll write it down here, 2 times 14 is equal to 28. We have 6 oxygens, so 6 times 18 It's uh, 8. 108. So when we add these three up, hopefully, let's try. Oh, so 65 plus 28, 6 times 18 is 108, and we have six water molecules, so that's six, also six. times 18, which is 108. I see we have a mistake here, because if we look here, there are six uh, oxygens. However, the molar mass of oxygen is not 18. It's 16. So six times 16 would be 96. So when we add these four numbers up, 65.41 plus 28 plus 96 plus 108, hopefully we get this 297.4. And the unit again is grams per mole. So uh, you can pause now and give it the last one a try. I'll come back um, now. So we have here the name magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. So we have one magnesium. And looking at the periodic table, it comes out to 24.31.
we have a one sulfur. So one times 32.07 is 32.07. And we have four oxygens, four oxygens. So four times 16. Sixty-four, and when we add these three up, hopefully we get a mass. Again, I forgot about the water. Uh, seven times eighteen. Seven times eighteen, we get one twenty-six. And when we add these four numbers up, hopefully we get a molar mass of two forty-six. Point four. Again, the unit is grams per mole. So these are just examples of how to incorporate hydrates when you're finding the molar mass. Um, this type of calculation you'll be doing in your um, lab calculation, so I'll go through it step by step. Um, the question says determine the hydrate formula of chromium-3 chloride, uh, meaning how many you want to find out how many water molecules are attached to the CrCl3 so the situation is you get a sample of 5.234 grams of hydrate sample you put it in a crucible which means you put it in some kind of a cup it's kind of like a cup shape and you heat it up and what's going to happen when you heat it up you're going to lose some of that water that's inside uh, your sample so if you lose water, the end mass will be less than 5.234. The end mass, they say, is 4.255 grams. So you've lost some water, and therefore the hydrate sample loses uh, some of that mass in the form of water, and you get 4.255 grams. So again, the goal is to find the hydrate formula, so how many water molecules are attached. So the key is to determine the amount of moles of CrCl3. And the second step is to find the moles of uh, water. So hopefully you know from lecture that if you want to find the moles of a compound and you're given the mass, you divide by the molar mass of that compound. So in this case, I've done it for you. The mass of CrCl3 is 4.255 grams. We divide it by the molar mass of CrCl3. This we determine from the periodic table. You notice the grams will cancel. And if we have the moles here on the bottom in the denominator, um, also in the denominator here for the 158.35, we bring it up. Here it will become 0 0.0268 moles of CrCl3. So that's step one. The second step is to find the moles of water. We know how much water is lost from the original compound because we have the beginning, we added heat, we lost water, and we have the end. So if we do 5.234 grams minus 4.255 grams, we get a mass of 0 0.979 grams, and that's the mass of water. Again, we want to find the moles of water we take the mass of water divided by the molar mass of water we've done it here our conversion factor we get 0 0.544 moles of water and the third step is to find the mole ratio between the two so we take the moles of water on top the moles of crcl3 on the bottom and we come up with 2.02 so Going back to the original question, determine the hydrate formula of chromium-3 chloride. It would be crcl 32 h 20 And you'll be doing this uh, in your lab as well.